Hi, Hi Rachel. Hi. Hi. So I'm sure people have talked to you guys a lot about your own personal music taste today, <laughs> but I'm a Meisner girl. So my whole thing with acting was always I would make playlists for characters. With a movie that is so, you know, intrinsically linked to music, did you guys use that to kind of approach these characters or did you kind of keep yourself removed? Definitely used it. I mean, Ned, our director, who also wrote the script, obviously, uh, made us all playlists um, for our characters. So to have the immediate access to Harriet in that way, in who he thought she was based on her soundtrack to her life was such a shortcut to her, to understanding how he wanted her to be portrayed, I guess. Um, and it immediate, it's like the shortcut to melding our versions of her. Um, and then, so I was like glued to that one. I also listened to the playlist he made, David for Max, um, knowing they would share music. So getting such a great behind the scenes insight into the kind of material of Max. And then, yeah, and then I had my own ongoing, ever growing playlist to try and get myself in those head spaces. And even on days off and like in the evenings or the mornings, it wasn't necessarily like the sad, sad music, but it was definitely in that more like melancholic tone so that I could live in Harriet's world, even kind of offset. Yeah, I think filming the whole thing was just a stark reminder about the real power of music. I mean, it really gave us a window every day into the tone of the piece and the tone of the scene. I mean, I feel like on other sets, you're spending a lot of time as actors with the director figuring out what the tone is, but music kind of allows a window in immediately. Mm -hmm. And so every day we would have certain songs that Ned would choose that kind of fit the tone and theme of that day. And listening to that, you didn't need those conversations because we all were on the same page already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think music also is very, at least for me, is very linked to grief because I like always think back to my dad and that's music was like our thing. And I think it's so powerful in that way. And I do love that this with Harriet really uses music as like her portal to like transport herself back to these memories. What for you guys is when you were filming something that is, you know, a lot of the times so in one character's head was the challenge of like really making sure that when you do share moments together, they pop because we have to have those for when she comes back to reality? Oh, that's a great question. I think part of that is this, it kind of mirrors what is going on with Harriet and David in that like, there wasn't so much pressure on making those scenes like pop. I think it was more the, how, the contrast of how calm these two characters are together. And that I think Harriet is concerned with having to present and I think, Morris is someone who is now growing tired of that kind of weight and he's such a vibrant person so she feels such a stark contrast to where he's at whereas being around David there's just this peace to being able to be where you're at and whether that's a good day or a bad day in grief it's just it, all of it is okay and I think that is what stands out about their relationship there's no one else in the kind of landscape who's I think for both of them in the same place at the same time. So I think that kind of spoke for itself. Yeah, I think you articulated that so beautifully. Um, I, <clears throat> I agree, I think, you know, they're not, in the typical rom-com sense, they're not trying to pick each other up, mm -hmm. you know, and there's no like wooing each other in that regard. There's a real deep vulnerable connection because of the shared grief and that kind of blossoms into what it becomes. and. Um, it was wonderful to sort of play into the reality of that because I think some of my most meaningful relationships are those, mm. the ones that kind of organically build and, and we share a connection in these ways. Mm. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait for people to get to see The Great Assist. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye, one.